Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. We have a special episode for you. We're only one week away from the Muscle Car Show, which is 6-3-23, and I'm at the Saratoga Auto Museum. So come out and see the show. I'll be there. I'm with Zach. Zach, your last name? Uh, it's Skoranek, Zach Skoranek. And your position here? I'm the director of media at the museum. So we're going to share this video with you as a preview. You can see the details in the description of this video, but it's James Bond's collection. Let's get right to it. So, the first thing you're greeted with is Sean Connery in the DB5, probably the most iconic car, maybe even the best James Bond, that's up to you, um, and the Bond in motion. So we start off right off the bat with Dr. No and the pod, as you can see, and we'll take a look at the pod, some of the details in the pod because I don't know if you were able to see all the details in the pod. Do you have your phone with the light on it? Sure. Let's show that. There you go. And as you actually read, let's go right there. You can actually read some of the details of some of these buttons that were there. Now, how cool is that? They didn't give you that shot. Go like that. There you go. Obviously all fake props, but pretty gosh darn cool where you stick your feet. So we start there with that pod. We're going to keep it moving. I will let you know up front that I am going to do a specific video just for the DB5. But the rest of the cars will get a chance to show you. So here was the Cougar, the Cobra Jet 428. Awesome. And not only that, but it was the convertible and it had the ski rack on it. So kind of interesting you have a convertible with the ski rack. We'll show that light in there. Sure. <clears throat> There's the interior. And the ski rack on the back of your Cougar. And there's a shot of it when it was in the movie. Also we have this one here which is the three-wheeler, you can see Sean Connery on that there, <laughs> looks great. There's a little Honda with this little whipper tail on it, and the box on the back. The 69 Mercury Cougar XR7, convertible. Then you might remember this car. This is the car, the 74 AMX Hornet that did that jump like that. They called it the Astro Spiral Jump. <laughs> Roger Moore took off in this one and did a spiral jump. It mentions though, which is really interesting, is they did that in one take, which is crazy. But I'm sure that that was uh, awesome when it landed it. For sure. We'll show you the interior. and an automatic. Nice. Well, one of the cars that was a favorite of mine was when they took the Lotus, Roger Moore, and went into the water. You can see the background where it's shooting out things from it. Now this is serious prop. There's nothing inside it. We can't open the doors. It's just a prop. It's got these great propellers in the back. But I'll try to show you some details while you might not always see because, well, we like those details. World Champion Car Construction. You wouldn't see that. The missile out the back. And, of course, the fins. The spray. The water louvers. Again, that door does not open. You can see there's no gaps in there. There you go some extra details your periscope on that one and the front of the Lotus like so good stuff right there then they had the uh, this is actually the prototype of the bike now one thing with this bike I mean take a look at the exhaust on this wet bike. Now they have them now, but at the time, <clears throat> this was uh, 
not what they had. So this was definitely something unique and different. And you can see Roger Moore writing it, The Water Cycle, from The Spy Who Loved Me. 1977 wet bike prototype. Now we've got some of the earlier film video, letting the camera catch up. You can see we've got some missiles out the front here. And our Aston Martin, which is great. We can take a look. There's actually, as you can see, nothing in the car. <laughs> as you can see, as we show that, the 85 Aston Martin V8 used in the living daylights. That looks pretty cool. Then the Neptune submarine, for your eyes only. There it is. Well, why show that when we can just show this? And if you look at the details of this, I mean, this is pretty serious material. I'm not kidding around here. That's pretty cool. Your ballast tanks. Ladder here only, the Neptune. <laughs> the antenna. That is not a step. Obviously used just to move the vehicle. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna take a look inside. So we're inside the sub. One of the things right off the bat is, well, you've got all those little portholes on the side, right? Well, you can see you can't get to any of them as you can look around in here. So although they look cool on the outside, you got these big air tanks on the inside. And here's a steering wheel, so somebody must have steered it from here. And I see somewhat of a seatbelt type device, which just goes to show, and you've got a battery. If you look behind me, in the back, like so, I'm gonna to try to show you to the best of my abilities what they would have saw if they were right here. I'll do what I can. I usually don't get to see this in the movie. I'll try to start from one side and go around to the other. Pretty cool. Well, if you want to know, for those of you who love the details, what was inside the sub, well, this may be the one opportunity. And as you can see, you can look right out the front. We'll go back to the cars. We're outside the sub and Zach gave me some interesting information. Zach, tell me what you just shared. So this submarine is, was at one point an actual working wet sub and what that means is on the interior it would fill up with water and the occupants or the drivers would actually have to be wearing scuba gear in order to, to control it. Wow, yep. that's amazing. It was pretty claustrophobic in there and yet that was pretty good. Well here we've got the tuk-tuk used in Octopussy and you can see a little exhaust, stop, taxi, a double arm. Let's take a look at there's something in the back seat here. All right, get our gauge there. And then we'll go up front. We've got some details here, left and right, marker headlights. The taxi there. And this aqua pod chaser, 
what do we have here? So this is actually uh, a jetpack of sorts. Okay. Um, it was actually designed by a military company that does special projects for military application. And so that's Holly Berry in the movie set uh, on it. And in the movie, they jump out of the plane with it. And this kind of allows them to go undercover without getting detected by radar. Super cool. Yeah. And we've got a Jaguar here. Oh, yeah rather than a BMW. And this Jaguar looks like this. And then we've got our machine gun on the back of it, which is super cool. Kind of interesting too, because usually most of the James Bond cars are silver and subdued. And this one clearly is not silver or subdued. This is the bad guy. <laughs> so he likes ah, to be flashy, you know. I got it. No humbleness with the bad guy. Nope. Got it. And le needless to say, uh, we've got the iconic DB5. Now, just for clarity, we're going to give you a lot more on this car for sure. We're going to open that trunk. We're going to take a look at the interior. You're going to actually see under the hood of this one, which I don't know if I've ever seen under the hood in any movie of that car. Now, granted, it is one of the prop cars, so there's different ones, but we'll see what's under the hood of this one. And you're going to want to see that. And we'll take you to the next room. So as we enter the second room, full of Bond cars. One of my favorite cars, the Z8. Just a great looking car. Looks like a retro version of the 507 from 57. And that's just great. I'll show you the back of this one. The banjo steering wheel. back of that car like so with the Z8 and Zach's treating us to looking under the hood for the M power there and that looks just great we've got a motorcycle we have the 2006 Aston Martin obviously right then was just before it looked good as well you can see it's trash now as you look at what happens to it after the flip of your carbon fiber, your rim is toast, the back end of it's toast as we go from there. I'm going to cut across to get to this BMW. You can see the rockets on the hood are being released from the sunroof, like so. Interior, very cool. That looks like a heavy vehicle. Beautiful. And we have Here's Bronson on the motorcycle. As you can see, there's the actual motorcycle. As you take a look at it, a big bike. Like so. And this one's obviously been in the movie as well. We have the bullets off the windshield. <laughs> We've lost the door. Actually the right amount of pedals. You can see the bullet holes off the dashboard all around you. And the pieces missing. The DBS. Hand built and now trashed. 
So this car was actually all done by hand. This one? This one right here. All the oh, oh, really? Yeah, all done by hand in the studio. Really? Yep, so every little scratch, mark, hole, all deliberately done. Did not know that. That's interesting. And our last car, the DB10. Now, there's some interesting things with this car. Let's uh, open the trunk for just a moment, shall we? This clearly is the movie prop. You can see the Hero 1 car. As we have some details there, the battery's missing for it. So Lou doesn't take off with it, which is super cool. Because this would definitely be a nice ride. Now, as we, I'm going to show the overall, so let's just shut it for just a second. And then we're going to come back to the interior, kind of wrap up with that. We can close the trunk too, if you wouldn't mind. What a great, thank you, Zach. What a great silhouette of that car. That's just classy. And the front nose, as you can see. Let's take a look and show them what we have on the inside of this one, showing you it's a movie prop car. So, like I told you before, every button in there is non-functional. The only thing that really works is the shifter and the steering wheel. Really? Not even the push to start or the ignition works. You have to go through that box there. So show them underneath. Yeah, so this is how you, if you want to adjust your seat, these don't work. You can actually lift this carpet up. It's all under there. And if this. you want to get really up and under, you can see something even cooler. I will get up and under. So here's your seat mechanism underneath and <laughs> look at all your controls under here. I wonder why they put them there. That's interesting. Your air, etc. All there, just not all there. Super cool. Great door as well. Let's let's listen to this door close. It's got an interesting this is sound to it. Favorite detail yeah, let me just go on the side. Go ahead. Ready? Yeah. Nice. It sounds like a little turbo. Hey, Zach, that was so much fun. What a treat to come out and see the Saratoga Auto Museum. On 6-3-23, we're going to be out here with the Muscle Car Show. Bring your muscle car, register. You can see some details in the body of this video. It's only a week away. Come on out, guys. You'll have a great time. Zach, thanks so much for being on My Car Story. Of course. Thank you, Lou. Thanks for coming. Hey, guys, if you stuck around to the end, you got a little extra treat here. Zach showed me a little behind the scenes. Tell me about this one. So this is our V12 Vanquish. And uh, this was in Die Another Day. This is the car that actually is getting chased by the Green Jaguar. Ah. And this one you can see isn't out there right now, obviously. Yep, we just got it back from the Oops. New York International Auto Show. We brought this to show off at one of our booths. Very cool. All right, little extra bonus footage, guys. Thanks for coming to the channel.